is he doing? please, in the village of Great Sunden. Who lives here then? <laughs> the Adams family? In fact, it's my family home. Or will be. Won't it, Pudding? She won't see me. Of course she'll see me. I'm her niece. I'm sorry, but she's adamant. Take me to Use Hall Farm, please. Use Hall? It's just down the road. What's the matter? Oh, I'll be all right. It's just that it was such a shock. You better go sit down. It isn't. James! Gosh, she's grown! <laughs> yes, they do. You remember Mirabelle, don't you, James? This must be Oliver. But I call him Pudding because mm. he's such a fatty. <laughs> Hello, Mirabel. Of course, I've been meaning to visit for ages, Beth. Yes, it has rather been a long time. I think the driver's expecting some money. I don't have any cash. The hole in the wall chewed up my card. Oh, it's been a foul day. Could you take care of it, Tim? I'll pay you back, I promise. Shall we sit down? Someone put the kettle on. But oh, Julie told us to get lost. <laughs> of course I knew Aunt Julie disapproved of the baby. She made that clear enough in her letters, but I didn't think she'd actually turn us away. She didn't know you were coming. Well, I wanted it to be a surprise. Honestly, you think we were still living in the 19th century? I bet she's after Aunt Julie's money. What? She's heard that Aunt Julie's dying. Rosamond, Aunt Julie isn't dying. She just has a gastric trouble once in a while. Mum says that can be fatal, especially with an old person. And I don't think you can criticise. All you think about is how much money Aunt Julie will leave you. Do not. Oliver's father has stayed in London, I take it. Oliver's father has done a runner. What? Decided that fatherhood wasn't for him. And just to make it a really memorable year, the lease has run out on my flat and the landlord wants me out. Thank you. That's why I'm here. Naive idiot that I am, I thought Aunt Julie would be happy to put us up. You mean you want to come and live in the country? Beth, I have had London up to my armpits. 
Besides, there's pudding to think of. All that hideous smock. Are those papers important? Uh, uh, sorry, Oliver. Excuse me. <laughs> It'd be a real inconvenience if I stay here tonight. I just couldn't face having to trace back to London. <laughs> of course you can. Thank God, there are still some people one can rely on. I saw the light under your door. You're looking at the stars. I'm hopeless at telling which is which. They all look the same to me. Well, you don't look at them individually, then you... Then you have to get up early for school. We broke up last week. That'll be nice. You'll be around to talk to me. Are you staying for a while, then? Well, I really ought to get back to London. A couple of days in the country would do me the world of good. Oh, James. Don't mean any hurry to grow up. Adult world can be a hellish place. Particularly if you're the sensitive type. I'm sorry you're having problems. I wish I could help. That's very sweet of you. But the problem is Aunt Julie. She's very old-fashioned. You see, I'm not married to Oliver's father. Now, to me, that's a great relief. But to her, it's a great scandal. But there we are. What can one do? I could always, you know, say how upset you are. Oh, no, no, I couldn't let you get involved in this. It wouldn't be right. Unless you really wanted to, that is. Well... I'll let you get on with your stargazing. doing down there? A money spider. <coughs> James, throw it away. You'll take it home and dissect it, knowing him. No, I won't. I'm against experiments on live animals. Oh, you mean they have to be dead before you reach for your scalpel? I better leave instructions that you're not to be let loose on my corpse. Oh, Aunt Julie, I'm sure you won't die for ages. If that's so, then it's bad news for some people. I got some chocolate fingers in that you said. They're my favourites. That's why your aunt said I was to get some in special. Thank you, Lucy. Aunt Julie, you're not our real aunt, are you? James, what a horrid thing to say. Well, we're not related by blood. But that shouldn't concern you, since in my experience, blood relatives are more trouble than they're worth. Why? Oh, I just wanted to be absolutely clear. That means that your closest relative is... Don't. Don't you dare mention that name in this house. It's such a shame when relatives fall out. James, Aunt Julie said, don't mention Mirabel. My advice to you, James Fifield, is to stop trying to be devious. You aren't capable of it. It's pathetic. I'll decide who enters this house. Do you hear? You really put your foot in it, didn't you? 
I honestly thought Francis was the man I'd been looking for. Not like the others. When I think how I've been treated by men, I sometimes even wonder if I'm one of life's victims. You know, whether I give off an odour that attracts the worst kind of man. Mirabel, I know it's none of my business, but I hope Francis is helping you out financially. I've got to be joking. Last time I asked him for money, I had to wear dark glasses for days. Hi, James. You mean they hit you? My God. I really ought to clear away some of these weeds, but I never seem to get the time. You could always borrow Dent. Dent? Aunt Julie's garden. Eddie can be bothered to turn up. She says he spends half his time in the pub. So, how's your day been? I went to Aunt Julie's. Oh, yeah? How was it? Did my name pop up? Well, yes, it did. But not in a positive sort of way. God. My mother would turn in her grave if she knew how her sister was treating me. I'm not being heartless, but she can't stay here indefinitely. She's got nowhere else to go. I don't see her making a desperate effort to find somewhere. you have to talk to her about it. Oh, I will, will I? And who's she gone to the pub with? Gone on her own. I bet she's an alcoholic. Of course she isn't. I thought it was burglars. I met Aunt Julie's gardener in the pub and he insisted on walking me home. Strange chap. Like a dog. You know, tags onto you and you can't get rid of him. Maybe he's fallen in love with you. Oh, nothing so romantic if he's like the other men I've known. I do hope you'll grow up to be a nobler sort of male. Everyone else in bed? We're kindred spirits, you and I, aren't we? Are we? Night birds. Can I come in for a moment? Oh, James. So nice to have a confidant. Someone I can talk to. Someone who listens. It's strange. You're so young and yet... Sometimes I feel you're the only one who understands me. What are these? Uh, coloured inks. Oh, so you're an artist as well as a scientist. I was always drawing pictures when I was small. I think it was my way of escaping. You shouldn't really do that, Maribel. Why not? The ink. What about it? It's not ink. It's poison. Poison? I make them as a scientific exercise. What kind of poison is it? That one's from the thornapple plant. Also known as Jimson weed. But those are only the common names. The proper name is Datura stramonium. You can see the tiny spines on the fruit. If you cut it open, you find black seeds. I use them for the poison. All my troubles could be over. No, Marabelle! <laughs> I was only kidding. I've never told anyone about my poisons. Don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. Kindred spirits, remember? I wish my ex-boyfriend was here, though. Slipped some in his tea. And that's one rat I'd love to see writhing in agony. You don't mean that. Don't I? 
You're too nice to wish that on anyone. Did it leave my bag? A ten pound note this morning, a five pound note yesterday. You think they just flew off like butterflies? She's lucky I haven't called the police. Oh, and now what am I going to do for a housekeeper? The village girls won't go into service these days. All they want to do is to rush up to town and get pregnant. I think I've got the answer. Have you now? Aunt Julie, it's obvious. Well, it may be obvious to you. Mirabelle, she could come and look after you. So you're still pleading her cause? She certainly knows how to make men jump through hoops. What do you mean? I expect you think I'm a heartless old woman. I think it's unfair. Well, for your information, I fully intended to take her in, her and her offspring. But I don't like being taken for granted. Turning up on the doorstep, unannounced, expecting a red carpet. She thinks the rest of us exist for her benefit. Completely self-centred, like her mother. If she got it from her mother, then it's not her fault. Ooh, you're so sharp. It's a wonder you don't cut yourself. You mean she can come and live here? But don't you breathe a word. I'll take her in when I'm ready. Charlotte about the bypass meeting. Beetroot and apples. Interesting. Mirabelle, it's for you. Me? Thank you. Who's phoning her? Yes, who's she given our number to? Which reminds me. James, have you stolen my diary? The one with the pony. Right. Siphon tubes. Mum, I'm going over to Simon's today. I might be back late. Well, someone has because I can't find it anywhere. Is it that any sign of my pen top in his pony? Oh, don't start that again. A child that age couldn't swallow a pen top. <coughs> it was Aunt Julie. She's asked me to go and live at the lodge. Oh, great. <coughs> I mean, that's wonderful for you. Will you be going soon? You'll come and visit me often, won't you? You'd like me to. I'll be deeply hurt if you don't. Thanks for being a true friend, James. That's right. 
just knocked lumps out of the banisters. She's got the rest of her things in storage in London. What's her cooking like? Uh, she actually didn't do much cooking when she was with us. Oh, I can see I'm going to regret this. Nonsense. It'll be a breath of fresh air for you. Oh, it's back to normal at last. I hereby declare this house a Mirabel free zone. Yes! What did I say? Rosie wants to walk down to the pond to feed the ducks. Fancy going with her? Oh, come on, Mum. Don't you think I'm a bit too old to be feeding the quack quacks? Yes. I suppose you'll pass that stage. Reminds me of a boy I used to have a crush on when I was your age. I do? No, the ducks. His name was Donald. Seems like centuries ago. Well, it was. Gosh, my first love. I thought he was the most beautiful creature on earth. And the funny thing is, I can't even remember what he looks like now. It couldn't have been love then. Couldn't it? If you love someone, you'll never forget them. Ever. Old age is endurable after all. Mm. Better be going, dear. We're off to Mrs. Bassett's. She's mad about Oliver, but then who isn't? Oh. <laughs> what a wholesome threesome. Who'd have thought Mirabel would have such a positive effect? You underestimated it, Dad. I believe I did. For one of life's victims, she always seems to get what she wants. Tea in. Aunt Julie's been having her tummy trouble again. I bet that's Mirabelle's cooking. You can't even cook pasta. Don't squabble, just go. he stole money and valuables from his previous employer. The police have only just caught up with him. Poor Aunt Jay. She's very upset. You see, it looks as though it was Dent who stole the money from her, not Lucy. Oh! Now it's brought her gastric trouble on. Oh. 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 
I think I'd better call the doctor. Poor Lucy. I've done a terrible thing. The doctor said it was a particularly bad attack this time. Well, shouldn't she be in hospital? Well, hear of it. She's lucky she's got Mirabel to look after her. Mm -hmm. Look, say what you like about Mirabel, but she's genuinely trying to be helpful. Her concern's actually quite touching. The sheets were rather messy. Of course, she hadn't been well for a long time. I shouldn't really be surprised. Criminals were meant to be punished for their crimes. We'll talk about it when I get back. I shouldn't be long. isn't it? Haven't paid for it yet, but, well, one just needs a car out here. Can we go for a drive? Oh, another time, James. I have to go into town to see the dreaded bank manager. Then I thought I'd do a bit of shopping now the rain's easing. That's why I'm here, actually. James, I'm going to ask a great favour of you, but I must stress you are absolutely free to say no. What? Why didn't you say no? It's only till she gets back. What are you playing at? How do I look? Like a clown. 
You look after him while I go and find some milk and biscuits. Party. Thank you so much for inviting me. We must have lunch together. Or a boat on the south of France, perhaps. That would be marvellous. Where is he? You made me jump. Where is Oliver? I told you to look after him, you idiot. Oliver! Oliver! James! James! I am not an idiot. Never mind that. Just help me find him. Oliver? What's that? Poison. Listen, go to the phone. be okay. No need for you to hang around any longer. Okay, you're sure? The stomach contents are being analysed and we'll keep him in for a night just to be on the safe side. But you mean Oliver's not going to die? <laughs> he will one day. We all do. But right now he's fine. Clearly he didn't swallow any of it. But as for those poisons of yours, young man... Yes, he knows what to do about the poisons. It was a great panic at the time, but Oliver's right as rain, Mirabel. There's nothing to worry about. Mirabel, I swear if anything had happened to Oliver, Have I, I got this straight? You let my child get hold of some poison? Of course, you didn't let Oliver have it, and he shouldn't have been asked to look after him in the first place. I forgot I left the thorn apple bottle lying around, and I didn't even know he got into my room. In future, Mirabel, you'll have to find a childminder or a nanny. James and Rosamond are too young to have that kind of responsibility. Yes, you're right. It was silly of me. I'm sorry. Well, I'd say you got off lightly this time, James. To my good friends Timothy and Elizabeth Fifield, the sum of £10,000. Plus the German music box I know they have always admired. To Rosamond Fifield, the sum of £2,000 to be held in trust until her maturity. To James Fifield, likewise, the sum of £2,000 to be held in trust until his maturity, plus my cat, Palmerston, should the last name have outlived his owner, which knowing him he probably has. To my great nephew, Oliver Francis Davenport, the sum of £5,000 to be held in trust until his maturity. The remainder of my estate I leave to my niece, Mirabel Louise Davenport. Well, I'm off to pick up my fermentation jars. 
Anyone want to come along for the drive? No. Right. See you later. Rosamond, if you're going to sulk, go somewhere else and do it. Not fair. Why should Mirabel get so much and I only get a bit? For God's sake, there's more to life than money. I've been trying to find her for months. Then somebody who knew her gave me your name. I wish I could help, but we haven't seen her for a while now. I vaguely remember she had a relative around these parts. Yes, an aunt, but unfortunately she died. And you've no idea where I could contact Mirabel? It's always possible she'll phone sometime, so if you could leave a number... It's Oliver I really want to see. My son. If Mirabel doesn't want us to be together anymore, fair enough. But to just disappear without a word, taking Oliver with her. She walked out on you? I came home one evening and there she was. Gone. The next day I discovered she'd emptied our joint account. Extraordinary. Of course, I know she can be unpredictable, but all the same. I'm sorry to have taken up your time, Mrs. Firefield. Not at all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Are you eavesdropping? You said you didn't know where Mirabel was living. It's a precaution. I'll tell her that he was here, and then it's up to her whether she contacts him or not. But he only wants to see his son. We don't know what he's got in mind. Mirabel said he's got a violent temper. Mirabel lied. You don't know that, James. Darling, people aren't always what they appear to be. I know he seemed very pleasant, but then he would if he thought that was the way to play it. wondering if I could have a word with you. About Mirabel. I made the mistake of telling her I'd nicked a few things from my last employer. She went and tipped off the police. But it was you who stole the money from Aunt Julie, wasn't it? Mirabel put me up to it. Suited her purposes to get Lucy fired so she could move in on the old girl. You didn't have to do it just because she asked you to. <laughs> a woman like that can turn a man's brains to mush. You probably noticed that yourself. Oh, yeah. She made monkeys out of both of us. She said if I helped her, she'd be ever so grateful. Like a fool, I believed it. But of course, once she got what she wanted, she wouldn't let me near her. I was a liability. Why didn't you tell the police it was her idea? You think they take my word against hers? She's a well brought up young lady, isn't she? Got all the charm, all the posh words. I can't believe she'd do it. Well, yes, you can. Else you wouldn't be here. I'm telling you, she's a devil in a skirt. But if there's any justice in the world, she'll get her comeuppance.
won't settle. Teething, you go into the living room. I'll be with you in a minute. Shall I make a cup of tea? Not for me, but you go right ahead. But... What? Are you quite sure you won't join me in a cup of tea? All right, then. What's yours? Uh, I've drunk it. Already? You must have been thirsty. What tea's this? It's a special tea I bought just for you. It's got an odd tangy sort of taste. It's quite nice though. Let's hope it perks me up a bit. Aren't you feeling well? Oh, I don't know. I'm just depressed. Story of my life. But you're living in this house. I thought that was what you wanted. Yes, but sometimes you can desire something so much. You think that it's going to solve all your problems, but when you finally get it somehow... And of course you miss Aunt Julie. Hmm? Oh, yes, of course. Is it like a heavy weight you're carrying? I suppose it is, sort of. That often happens. What does? The things people have done in the past are burdens they have to live with. <laughs> you're so deep, you've lost me. Is something the matter, James? It's just that I had a conversation with Dent. He said you talked him into stealing the money from Aunt Julie. My God. And then shopped him to the police. My God! You've almost got to admire it, haven't you? The sheer audacity! So it was all my doing, I see. James, Dent has got a criminal record. You couldn't trust him to tell you the correct time of day. But that's not all. What do you mean? That business with Oliver. I was surprised you took it so calmly. But then you knew it was only the thorn apple bottle he'd got hold of. James, if this is a game, I'm not sure I care for it. What was in the bottle? Coloured water, I suppose. I've no idea what you're talking about. You mean you didn't take my thorn apple poison? <sighs> Why on earth would I take your thorn apple poison? Are you suggest... Oh, now you're going too far. I ought to tell you I've put it in your tea. Yes, the stuff in the bottle. You've been drinking it. Shall I call an ambulance? I think I'd better. James, we need to talk. Okay. James! James, listen! Get away from me! I must talk to you! So you can tell me some more lies? Please, James! You stole my thorn apple poison! You murdered Aunt Julie! At least hear my side of it! There's nothing you can say! Please! You're right. The bottle in your room contains a harmless liquid now. So it's true. It really is true. It's true. I planned to kill her. But I didn't kill her. Something happened. Something completely unexpected. I started to like each other. Very soon, far from wanting to kill her, I'd have risked my life for her. And how is it she's dead? There really was something wrong with her stomach. Her illness killed her. You seriously expect me to believe that? It's true, James. Like all the other things you told me? James, I swear this time I am telling you the truth. So you say. Well, if you can't believe me, if you feel you have to tell the police, then that is what you must do. Do you know what it was that helped bring Aunt Julie and me together? It was you. The one thing we had in common was that we both loved you. We used to talk about you. About your enthusiasm and your...
curiosity, the way you want to be a good person. And that changed things. I wanted to be a good person once, but I took a wrong turning somewhere. Because of money. That's a real poison, James. The lust for money. It damages people. It makes them calculating and devious. You help me to discover that it's love that matters. And being part of a family. I know that now. You saved me from becoming a murderer. Please, Mirabel, just tell me the truth, the total truth, the absolute, genuine truth. Did you kill her? No, I didn't. Rosalind? You're going to be late. I don't want to go to school. Why don't we live in London? Hello, Mr. Jobson. It's Beth Fifield. Hello. I just received the proof copy of our Stop the Bypass leaflet. <laughs> well, it would be excellent, but for one thing. The word by, as in bypass, shouldn't have an E on the end of it. Yes, I am sure it's spelt B-Y. The letter E is conspicuous by its absence, or should be. Well, your man might have a City and Guild certificate, Mr. Jobson, but on this occasion, he slipped up. Fine. You go and have a word with him, and I'll phone you back in ten minutes. Bye. Unbelievable. You haven't touched your breakfast, James. You better get a move on, or you'll be late for school. Courtroom next on ITV3 as Rumpole of the Bailey is called to Germany to defend an army trooper accused of killing his bullying sergeant. Then it's upstairs downstairs at a quarter to seven. <laughs>